Well, Alaska is referred to as the last frontier. The Alaska Peninsula is uh, one of the wildest places on the planet. It's a place that I come to every year, every season. I get off the plane and I say, wow, every time. The flight with Sam and his helicopter was extremely exciting. First thing I thought of was being in an IMAX theater with surround, almost surrounded by a visual overload of so much scenery you couldn't take it all in. We're on a National Wildlife Refuge, the Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge, and you cannot build any permanent structures, but they do allow you to have uh, land use permits and sites to cache or store structures that aren't permanent that can be taken down. And I guess we've carried that to the nth degree. We have the most elaborate safari type camps that you can imagine. It's uh, hot running water and bedroom facilities, uh, drying mudroom shelters and stoves and the like. Come on in. Yes! <laughs> I've seen thing. tents before, but this is a tent. <laughs> this is a tent. Well, thank Jeez. you. Jeez! Mr. J.W. Smith, this guy has raised the camping thing to a five-star hotel facility. I have never camped out of my life with tents in a place like this. This whole area right here is laid out to where these tents are back in the trees. They're away from the wind. We have beautiful mountains all around us. A lot of people spend a lot of time here in the evening, particularly you can see bear, moose occasionally, caribou, foxes. Most of the animals are pretty tame because there's not any humans here besides us. In this country, all around uh, this part of Alaska, the salmon really drive uh, the, the, the food chain, the, the ecology around here. They, they bring the nutrients from the ocean up into the river systems. The, the, the salmon, of course, spawn and die. Uh, their decomposing bodies put the nutrients back in the system that, that uh, nourish the plankton and the algae that the, obviously the young salmon will feed on next year. And the salmon really is the pillar of the ecology in this country. And it's uh, quite fascinating just what they support in terms of the bears, the seals, the otters, the char, the rainbows. And, and that's part of the joy of uh, having a chance to fish in this country. And so there are going to be a lot of silver salmon holding in here. They'll come up here and rest, and they'll be in schools. They're not paired up yet, and they should be pretty hot. Salt water comes in high tide to right down there where you see those go. The, the pinks are good a good sport fish for about two to three weeks before they come into the stream when they're hanging around the stream mouths and we catch some of those. But the silver salmon takes a long time in the spawning process. The silvers are bigger and they got a lot of horsepower. Bigger's better, I guess. They're bright silver colored. The very fact that it takes them longer to spawn gives them more longevity as, as far as their uh, eye appeal is concerned and more strength. It, they, they come in packing more energy to, to make that long spawn. And he is all the way down in that big, you can see that big wake down there. You can see his tail up. I'm going to have to go down and chase him down, I think. I'm going to have to go chase him down. The, the thrill of that initial strike, and, and usually they'll come out of the water almost abruptly, and it, it's uh, everything happens so fast, you're just kind of hanging on. Oh, I know it. Oh my gosh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. How crazy is this? This is about as wacky as it gets. This is a fresh silver salmon. I mean, fresh and nutty. <laughs> Here, the salmon are large and they come late. They have to go down through False Pass and spend about two to three more weeks at sea to get here. My season starts a little later than other seasons. We get the first salmon about the first of July or so. The Arctic char are always here, but uh, the height of the fishing season would begin the last week in June, first week of July, and then continue through September. I got one in there. 
Great. Thank you, sir. Let me get you right here with you. Great fish. Get him up close. Wow, look at the mouth. He's saying hello to you. <laughs> hello from Alaska, from the Alaska Peninsula National Wildlife Refuge. One of the great things about being out here with J.W. Smith and a guy like Sam Egley is they're two of the professionals out here who uh, are really partners of the Fish and Wildlife Service. You know, the only means of access of getting out here is either by uh, fixed wing aircraft or by helicopter and both JW and Sam are true professionals who really believe in the in the leave no trace ethic. They really respect this land, love this land, their livelihood depends on it. Without guys like that, people like us, sportsmen and women, wouldn't have the opportunity to get out here and enjoy these places. Look up, got it? Okay. 